Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to or welcome back to the channel. I am Blitzheart, better known as Blitz, and today I am bringing you this ultimate mangrove survival storage house you can see behind me. And you may notice it's connected by a little bridge to another house. This is our mangrove survival starter house. The tutorial is up in a card right now and a link down below if you want to build the full mangrove survival set because there are more builds to come for this little series of tutorials and in that first tutorial we'll also find the seed and the coordinates for this location so do feel free to build the whole set along with me if you'd like to or of course you can just build today's build as a standalone build it has a full very fun mangrove and muddy exterior with a bunch of flowers and little details and poking on inside you can see we also have a full interior a whole bunch of big storage chests this storage should serve you for the foreseeable future of your minecraft survival life and going on upstairs we also have a tiny loft with a little spot for you to sleep as well and with that very quick brief rundown of today's build done let's jump straight over to the block palette all right and everything you are going to need for the exterior of this build is right here though it does look kind of a mess and some of this is more on the optional side depending how heavy you want to go with your texturing so up on the very top row for our base box we have mangrove logs dark oak logs note blocks barrels stripped mangrove mangrove red terracotta some coarse dirt and some rooted dirt now especially the rooted dirt this one is optional i think it's pretty if you're going to struggle too much to get it in survival just skip it and sub in your root of dirt with some extra coarse dirt. Then you're going to need blocks, slabs, and stairs of deep slate. I'm using tiles, cobble, and brick. Feel free to use whichever or however many of those you would like. And of course, we only need a few walls, as you can see right here along the front. Four total. We've got some cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, and stone brick. Filling in the roof, we're going to need mud blocks, muddy mangrove roots, mangrove roots, and some smooth basalt. Plus, you're going to want to shear a little bit of grass to place over the top of the roof to add to that overgrown look. You're also going to want spruce stairs, spruce slabs, spruce trapdoors, spruce signs, spruce fence, spruce fence gate, dark oak stairs, dark oak fence, dark oak buttons, grindstones, chains, lanterns, item frames, chests, oak trapdoors, ladders, campfires, and a singular dark oak door. Then, of course, we're going to have our flower pots and a few extra details. So the grass blocks, the mangrove trapdoors, and the moss carpet are other details, and these are the five plants that I place in the actual flower planters around the build feel free to use whatever plants you like i just kind of went with a red plant scheme to scheme to match the mangrove so i've got some rose bushes red tulips poppies oak saplings and dark oak saplings and there we go so once you have all your materials sorted out let's head over to the dimensions and these are the dimensions for today's build. So you've got here a 13 by 21 for your main big rectangle platform for the build with this little front platform, very similar to these platforms we have on the starter house that is a five by nine along the front, though one block of that is an overlap. So it does only extend four blocks beyond the front of the main platform. And then if you're intending to create this build here in this location as part of the set with our starter house, you're going to want this little connecting bridge right here which is seven blocks long two blocks wide the main platform extends one block past the front end of this bridge and this bridge is one block gap between the house and where it begins so you'll be knocking out these two gates and with your location picked and the dimensions laid out let's launch straight in to the tutorial Grabbing your mangrove logs and note blocks, we're going to start by bringing in the lower frame of the main platform. So again, if you're doing this with the starter house, there is a seven block long gap between the starter house and this one right here. And we're starting by bringing a log all the way down from this point to the ground, which extends one, two, three blocks above the surface of the water with a note block there on top. Then we're going one, two, three, note block, one, two, three, note block, one, two, three, and a note block. Then bringing this pillar all the way down to the ground again. Then turning the corner, we're going one, two, three, note block, 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 one, two, three, and the final note block. Then we're just mirroring that and that onto this side. So a bunch of gaps of three logs broken up by note blocks and bringing our main logs down in those corners. 
So your frame should look something like this here at this point with a bunch of gaps of three with the logs broken up by note blocks and our four pillars in the corner. Next we're bringing down a few more pillars with our mangrove logs first in these two spots here at the front. Then turning the corner we're bringing another pillar down here after that first gap then leaving a note block and doing that second note block so we're bringing down pillars in these two spots. Then we're again mirroring what we did here and here on these opposing sides so bringing pillars down to the floor of the lake in one, two, three and four positions. And then with the main platform starting to come together with our supports laid out just like this, we're coming here around the front and we're going to be bringing in the supports for the tiny front platform as well. So we're counting out one, two, three, four, and then one, two. And right here, we're placing a note block there, getting rid of these temporary blocks and doing the same on this side. So one, two, three, four, one, two, placing a note block right there, getting rid of the temporary blocks and then just connecting these note blocks to the floor of the lake with the logs. And now with that done, we're going to be adding a little bit of detail to the frame using our spruce stairs, spruce signs, spruce trapdoors, and spruce slabs. First, using the stairs, we're coming here on the front going one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then using our signs, we're just connecting up all of our stairs with these blank signs. Oh, not with any writing on them, just like that along the front. Then using our trapdoors only on these ones on the corners, we're just adding that extra little bit of trapdoor action and adding them in these two spots, but leaving this one here at the front. Then turning the corner, we're again adding our stairs at all of these intersections of our cross beams and adding our signs next to all of our stairs beneath the note blocks on the main pillars. And then using our trapdoors, we are adding these all the way around into all these spots. So right here on either side of these stairs and underneath these stairs, underneath and on the top edge, just like that. And then coming around the back, we're doing almost exactly the same as we did on the front. The only difference is going to be that with our spruce trapdoors, we are adding it here in the middle as well, but we're still leaving these ones here on the sides, only adding these little ones in those spots because I think it's a little too crowded with all the trapdoors through there. And again, the signs along the back as well. Then round on this final side, we're just mirroring what we did on the opposing side. And then with that extra bit of frame detail added, the next thing we're gonna do is using our spruce slabs and spruce trapdoors, we are gonna fill in this whole main frame. So we're doing this by doing a mixture of these slabs and trapdoors all the way around the roof, making this really nice textured look as we go along. And when your platform is all filled in, it should look something like this with a nice mix of the slabs and trapdoors. Though do be as liberal or as sparing with those trapdoors as you like, as they can also be a little bit of a hazard, especially in multiplayer, but I think that just makes things a little bit interesting. Then coming over here, we're also going to be adding in our bridge. So using our slabs, we're going one, two, three, four, five, then trapdoor, 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 just like that. Then slab, campfire, slab, campfire, using our shovel to extinguish those two. And then slab, slab here at the top with one slab underneath that side of it just for fun. Then using our spruce fence, we can also go one, two, three, just like that for a little bit of extra detail there under the bridge. And just to make it look a little bit more rickety, I'm actually gonna swap that slab into a trapdoor as well. Then over here at the front for our little front platform, I like to start this with our pattern of the trapdoors and slabs, then add in our campfires. So first I'm gonna add the slabs here at the front, going all the way around, but just kind of filling in this middle area and missing out on the edges where our note blocks are. Then using our trapdoors, we're adding in kind of the trim to our slab platform, going all the way around and filling in that space coming along the back here with those as well. But leaving this one here as a gap because we're grabbing our oak trapdoors and going one, two, three, like that. Closing those trapdoors and then using our ladders to go one, two, three up here at the front. And then grabbing our campfires, we're just gonna start breaking up this whole platform, mixing them in both with the slabs and with the trapdoors 
just to give it a much rickettier effect, make it seem a lot more cobbled together and like it belongs in the setting we're creating. And of course, extinguishing those campfires. And then with the little front platform done and looking something like this, which we can come back to all of these areas and add a bit of mossy carpet later, if that is the style you're going for, grab yourself some mossy cobble walls, cobble walls, stone brick wall, spruce fence and spruce fence gate, and we're going wall, 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 wall here along the front. Then we're going triple gate, leaving a gap, triple gate, just like that, then gate, gate, fence and over here on this side just a fence right there and now it's time to move on to the actual body of our storage house so we're going to be grabbing our dark oak logs and our barrels and laying out the general frame for the build first up so using our barrels on top of these note blocks we're going one two three four five one two one two three four Five, and then turning this corner as well we're going a gap of three and a barrel and a gap of three and a barrel so we have them laid out just like this which are going to be the barrel bottoms on our dark oak pillars next we're going one two three and four on top of all of these barrels and then after bringing all of these pillars up we're going an additional one two three four five on these two middle ones and those two back ones so one two three four five and back here as well and then we're going a filler block and getting rid of that going one two three to connect up these two and the same back here so filler block getting rid of it one two three then down here at the bottom we're going across by one right there just above where this block is here and then one two three one and then mirroring that over here as well and then with these little cross beams done so double checking we have four below this cross beam and four above then coming around here we can also go from this point right here and connect this up to the back end and do the same over here and then with that done, we're also gonna add a few pillars that are gonna be for here on the inside. So coming in here, we're going one, two, three, four, five, not doing the barrel bottoms here as well. And the same on this other side, just bringing up another layer of these dark oak logs. And then turning the corner and in line with these external pillars, two blocks out from them going all the way up to just beneath this cross beam. And we're matching these up with where all of these pillars are on the outside. So right here, turning the corner, back one, across two, right here. Gap of three, one here. Gap of three again, and one here. So our pillaring now should be looking something like this. At this point, we can also add cross beams here, here, and here just in line with where these pillars are along the sides and coming from the future just because i forgot these logs we're also adding our pillars one two three four one two three four one two three four here on this side and the same over here one two three four one two three four one two three and four right there like that so then grabbing yourself some mangrove planks, strip mangrove wood, red terracotta, coarse dirt, a little bit of rooted dirt, and a few mangrove stairs, we're going to start filling in our main walls. So I'm going to start by filling in just with the mangrove planks and then texturing up each face. But coming here to this front face and going in one, so in line with where these logs are here at the back, we're just filling in this space, leaving room for a doorway with a stair above it. And then we're going to start mixing in all our different texture blocks here. So I'm going pretty heavy on the strip, a little splash of the red terracotta, a bit of the coarse dirt and a bit of rooted dirt as well, something just like that. And then across one we're doing much the same, so we're going in by a layer and just filling this all in with the mangrove, then mixing around all of our blocks to texture it up a little bit. There we go, and then the same over here as well, going in by a layer and texturing it up with all of our blocks. So something just like this. Then coming up to this top front face as well, we're inlaying by a block. So doing fillers up to this point. And we're gonna have a two tall window in this space. So we're leaving a gap right here and then doing the same and texturing this up. So the front should now be looking something just like this. Then turning the corner, we're doing much the same as we did along the front all through here. So inlaying our walls by one, going all through these spaces right here and bringing these walls up to this point here with our texture scheme. 
And then with your walls looking something like this, I'm also coming here around the back and we're gonna be filling in this space right here to connect up these pillars as well. Now this back set right here won't be visible so don't worry about texturing it at all. If you want to save on mangrove wood you could just pop a torch in there so mobs don't spawn back there but we are just filling that in and also texturing up these little inner walls. So it'll be something just like this. And then with those pillars there done now as well, if you missed that step, just in line with where those pillars are on the outside and up for, we're also going to be filling in this space with our mangrove mixture, but we're just not inlaying it by one. So in all of these areas, all the way up to the height of the pillar and texturing it up. So there we go, this side should be looking something like this now and we can come around the back and do pretty much exactly what we did at the front but we're just not doing the door, we're just doing a flat wall here in this space. So there we go, this back side should be looking just like this and then around here on the final side we're just mirroring exactly what we did over there. So with all the texturing done, which I know that kind of happened pretty quickly, but feel free to pause and copy if you need. It should be looking something like this, of course, remembering these little inner walls right here as well. And this here is kind of this wall and this side, which is a little hard to see because the tree is right there. But with all that done, next up, grab yourself a dark oak door and some dark oak fences. We're just going to fill in these two upper windows with the fences and pop the door around here in the front like that next grab your deep slate so using the cobbled brick and tiled in our blocks stairs and slabs we're going to start by coming around the side with our stairs and coming here to this block out and running all the way along the side a mixture of our three different deep slate variants just stopping when we run into this tree here if you're building it in exactly this spot if not just continuing these stairs all the way along then we're going one past the end of this pillar here and going upside down stair then slab slab double slab 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 on top of that and continuing these slabs all the way across and then making our way back down the build mirroring exactly what we just did so bringing our slabs across then bringing in the upside down stair stair and running these stairs all the way along the side as well and of course again one past the end upside down stair and running you through the pattern again it's slab slab double slab 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 up one and slabs all the way across and back down until running into these leaves right here at which point i'm just going to knock out that one to bring in these two slabs right here and pop in one upside down stair there. Then our frame for the lower part of the roof should be done and looking something just like this and we're gonna start bringing in the frame for the upper segment. So again, grabbing our stairs and here on this top line of the sides of the roof, we're just gonna start running our stairs along again, extending one past each end. Then with those stairs brought along on either side, we're going upside down stair, block, stair, upside down stair, lock stair and then one inner stair here in the middle just like this on that center line bringing up each side much the same way then with both sides brought up in that little pattern using our stairs we're going one here at the top and two with an upside down again one and two just like that then grabbing our slabs and we're just connecting up both ends of the roof from this lower part of that top stair all the way across and there you go, you now have the frame brought in on your roof and the build should be looking something like this. It's already really starting to come together. And now that the roof frame is done, grab yourself some smooth basalt, mud, muddy mangrove roots, mangrove roots, and a little bit of grass, and we're gonna start filling in this frame. First and foremost, I'm just gonna be using my mud and filling in a flat layer all the way along, right through here within this frame of the roof. And then I'm going to be adding a little bit of extra detail to the roof by adding these little bits all the way along that stick up. Maybe something just like this, a little bit of that, and like that. So this will just add an extra piece of dimension to our roof. And now we're going to fill it in, add some texture using our smooth basalt muddy mangrove roots and a very light splash of the roots. I think the transparency of them is very fun. 
but you need to not overuse them too much or else it's really going to affect how rickety your roof looks. Maybe I'll put mine all through there and then just run around texturing it up without other blocks as well. So with my texturing done, my roof now looks something like this. It's still the majority mud, quite a bit of the muddy mangrove roots, and then a splash of the basalt and the roots themselves mixed in. And now I'm just grabbing some grass and throwing it over the roof in a few different spots. We want this to be a pretty loose scattering, but I think it really helps make the build fit in with the kind of overgrown, messy feeling of the swamp. And then we are coming up here to the top and doing much the same, so first filling in with just the mud in this level and this level just filling in the frame so it's first gonna look something like this then I'm gonna start knocking out little segments of the roof and just putting some backing in behind them so little bits of mud and this is gonna have a similar effect to that little addition we added where it just adds an extra bit of depth to the roof so maybe knocking out all these kind of bits something here so there we go now it should be looking something like this a little bit more ruined with just that mud brought in to back all of that and now again we're gonna go back through our little area of mud and add our texture now of course again as I've said in a number of my tutorials I do find it easier to texture after I shape but if you prefer to just wait till I'm finished, pause frame and copy my exact texturing from the get-go, you can also do that. And there we go, now with the upper segment of the roof done, it should be looking something like this. And now the build's really starting to come along. And of course, now everything we just did here, we are copying over onto this side. And just like that, your roof should be looking something like this. So this is what I've done on this side with my texturing and what I've done in the upper area. So overall, my roof is now pretty well done and we just have a few more little details to add to this exterior. And for those details, the next things we're gonna need are some barrels, dark oak logs, a piece of dark oak wood, dark oak stairs, dark oak trapdoors, some buttons, grindstones, chains, and lanterns. And first and foremost, coming here onto the front with our stairs, we're just adding in this little bit of detail all the way across these three front segments with these trapdoors as well, going either side with those stairs and then placing these trapdoors up at the top on one side and on the other. So we have these tiny little arches filling this space, adding another one of these arches up top as well. Then turning the corner, we're gonna be adding these arches in under the roof lip as well, all the way around. So just doing exactly the same thing with our stairs and trap doors. So this side will look something like this, then at the back doing exactly the same as we did at the front. So just like that, and then coming around the corner again, the same as we did on the other side. So there we go. Now with that little dark oak detail added, we're also going to grab a dark oak log and run this all the way through the top of the roof, extending to here on this end with a barrel after that. Then coming across this side, grabbing the log from the other end and running it all the way along to one past the end and doing that. Then filling in this little space right here with barrels where we can. And the same goes over here, barrel, barrel, and barrel in there. There we go, with a dark oak trapdoor there and one on the same spot on the other side, right under that log. Next, grabbing a dark oak button right on the end, grindstone underneath, chain and lantern, just like that out front of this window. Then for this back end, it's much the same. So button, grindstone, chain, chain and lantern for something a tiny bit different. Then also using our chains and lanterns, we're gonna add a few lights onto the corners of the build. So we might go a lantern here, a chain lantern in this corner around over here maybe even a double chain lantern then with all those little lights added we're coming in here to the front getting rid of this slab right here so we can go one two and a barrel then with a button on the end of that we go chain piece of wood and another chain underneath that just like that and then we can grab some item frames and chests to run all the way around this piece of wood just like this to make a little sign for our storage house. 
And now we're gonna grab some grass blocks, spruce signs, and mangrove trapdoors and add a bunch of flower boxes around the exterior of our storage house. I'm gonna be putting rose bushes, dark oak saplings, oak saplings, poppies, and red tulips in these bushes, though feel free to choose and put in whatever you like and whatever you have laying around. First with our grass blocks, just going through these two spots here with one layer of them, mangrove trapdoor in the middle and just spruce signs on either side of that trapdoor. The same over here, mangrove trapdoor, spruce sign on either side of it. Then coming around the corner, we're doing these boxes in every single one of these slots all the way along. Of course, with the trapdoors and signs. Then we're doing the same little flower box trick around the back as well, adding them in these three spots with our trapdoors and signs. So just like that, then in through here, adding them all the way along on this side as well. Though, fun little thing you could do actually, I was just thinking about this, is in this little spot right here, if you've done it exactly in this world and this spot, you kind of have this little hidden nook. So you could just do the flower box to keep up the repetition, or you could put in a little chest or something, just a secret little hidden thing, some kind of fun thing for people to find if they do go exploring and end up tucked away in that little corner just for a little bit of something extra. And then, of course, continuing our flower boxes, adding our trapdoors and our signs, and then using our little mix of foliage pieces to fill in our flower boxes. And we can also pop a lantern just here under this bridge if you want the extra bit of light there. I just think it adds an extra detail onto that tiny bridge connecting the two builds. And this is what my final little flower boxes look like. So I've just scattered this little kind of red and green plant mixture all through, just like this here along the back. And around here on the side, I've done that. And the exterior is just about done. If you want to add the mossy details like we gave the option of doing here on the starter house as well, grab yourself some mossy carpet and we're just going to start by coming here down the front and beginning to add in a little bit of the extra moss to help bring in that detail. So maybe something like this just for the lower platform and I'm going to come up a layer and just scatter some moss around up here as well. Maybe something just like that and a little bit up here too. And with that little bit of mossy detail added, it's now time to move on to the inside of the build and actually get our storage set up. So the first things you're going to want on your hotbar for the interior portion of the tutorial are your mangrove stairs, chests, barrels, dark oak logs, dark oak stairs, dark oak trapdoors, and your deep slate brick, tile, and cobbled deep slate stairs. And we're going to start by using our mangrove stairs and just running them along this outer edge right in here through all these areas for our chests. Same along the other side, just running our stairs all the way along. And you could use either slabs or your stairs for this bit here, but we're just going to fill in this gap right here with either slabs or stairs. So it looks like it's a whole block from underneath, but you'll still be able to open your chests up into that space. And then once all those gaps are filled, we're gonna grab our chests and just fill every single segment up with double chests. Lengthways like this is how I'm doing them, but you can get creative with it, lay it out however you want. You could do some kind of crazy, you know, chest barrel combo if you prefer that style, but this is to maximize on the amount of storage we can have in this space. Don't forget you can hold shift to place them just like this and then go just like this to make those linked up into double chests all the way along and we're filling all of these segments with our chests. And then with all of our chests filled in, it should be looking something like this. And we're gonna grab our dark oak logs and just bring across these cross beams to fill in this weird gap in these walls. And the same thing up here at the top ends, bringing across those cross beams and just bringing our barrels down to fill that little gap as well. Same on the other side, logs across and our barrels in the gap. Then with our logs, we're also gonna go one, two, through all this space, anywhere that lines up with these. One right here and one, two right there. So we kind of have these little cross beams in line with where these are. Then using our dark oak stairs, we're just going to pop these at all of these intersections to kind of make it seem as though these logs connect up all the way along and then accenting those with our dark oak trapdoors. And the same over here on this side. 
Then, using our mixture of the deep slate stairs, we're going to fill any of this extra space here on the inside, leaving these blocks poking through for that extra bit of the detail, but otherwise just using the stairs to add that extra dimension to this upper area of roof. And then with our upper area of roof looking something like this all the way along, we're going to use our dark oak stairs and trap doors to add some more shape to these lower beams as well. So just running our stairs all the way along to connect up with where these cross beams are and using our trap doors above and below the stairs to help fill out that little curved shape. And there we go, it's already looking a lot more detailed in here. Next up, we're grabbing our ladders, an oak trap door, some spruce slabs, spruce trap doors, two spruce fences, and our spruce fence gate. And we're going one, two, three, four, five, six with our ladders on the left side of this back end opposite the door. Then at the top of that, we've got an oak trap door right there. And then I'm just going to fill this gap with our spruce slabs first and then texture it up with our spruce trap doors. So just these first two segments in between the beams. And then of course, adding that little bit of our trap door texture that we like to do something just like that. And then fence, fence, gate there at the end to make this little loft. And then to decorate up here in the loft, the first things you're gonna want is a gray bed right here, a little bit of gray carpet that we're just gonna scatter around on the floor, maybe a pattern just like that, nothing too crazy. Composter right here, dark oak fence on top, two mangrove leaves just like that. Over here on this side, dark oak stair, dark oak stair, dark oak sign, just like that, and a little trap door right there. And then we're also just popping a dark oak trapdoor right here in front of the window on the opposite side to the loft. Then to add some extra decoration up here, we're popping a barrel right here with a tripwire hook on the front, a flower pot with a red tulip, a few candles up here on the top, lighting those ones up, and then around on the other side, maybe just a flower pot and an oak sapling right there. And then for the final touch upstairs, we're grabbing an item frame and right above the bed here, we're popping a clock in that one, just cause I'm a big fan of having clocks and item frames right near my beds. Then with our paintings and a few filler blocks so we can get the correct paintings we want, we're gonna try and get a two tall painting right here. Maybe, oh, another filler block, that one there I like. Then over here, we're gonna go for another two tall painting. So using our filler blocks and I want the opposite one. So that one and over here, a one high painting, something like that. There we go. And grabbing our lanterns, one, two and three in those spots. And moving downstairs as well, we can just pop our lanterns onto these two, oh, three beams as well. Then to decorate the downstairs area a little bit, we're gonna grab a crafting table, smithing table, anvil, and a chest stone cutter, a few dark oak trap doors, dark oak slabs, dark oak signs, and a cartography table. Coming over to the door first with a cartography table with a little sign on it for extra detail. Dark oak slab, dark oak trap door up here for a little shelf with a sign on the side of that. Then around here on this side, we're going crafting table, smithing table, anvil on the smithing table. Then up a block, we've got slab, trap door, sign on that slab then our ender chest and our stone cutter right there then for a little more detail downstairs we can pop a flower pot and a lily of the valley there on the crafting table another flower pot with a mangrove propagule right there up here a barrel tripwire hook and a few candles not forgetting to light those ones up and then scattering a little bit of brown carpet over the floor and now what i'm gonna do with this is only place my carpet in these center three blocks and leave this line without carpet right next to the chest just to kind of draw your eye to this middle line of the space a bit more but I'm still gonna do what I love to do with my carpet and leave it very very scattered maybe something just like that and then with that your storage house is pretty much done a final optional is of course going to be however you want to label and organize your chests you can place item frames on the ends of them if you'd like you could also use signs on the chests, or you could put signs above each segment just labeling what's in the segments you could also do the classic side to side arrows there's you know dirt here and stone here that kind of thing but you wouldn't really be able to label the middle ones so whatever you think is going to work for you 
And with that, today's Ultimate Mangrove Survival Storage tutorial is complete. Congratulations on following along and finishing this pretty big, pretty detailed storage house. I sincerely hope it serves you well in all of your upcoming Minecraft adventures. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed today's tutorial video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.